So, welcome again to the second part of my talk that talks about uh, uh, what is an ontology. Again, I am Mustafa Jarrar from BZ University in Palestine, and I'm specialized in semantics and uh, ontologies and that integration. So, what is an ontology and why do we need it for e governments and how? Uh, what's an ontology? If you go to Google and you ask Google what is an ontology, you will find something related to philosophy, which is the subject of existence. But we are not dealing with these things. Uh, we are actually mean with, a, with an ontology as the specification of, uh, or the description of, the meanings uh, of the uh, words we use in, in a domain, like in the government domain. So it's like the characterization or specification of the meanings of terms, of concepts we have in the government domain. So this is simply what is an ontology. Or to make it even simpler to say, the, it is a dictionary written in a certain way that organizations uh, share, have in common, to understand each other when they exchange information. So. Uh, why do we need it? Well, if you have, for example, a, a web service between uh, institution A and institution B, and uh, the meaning of the data, the semantics of the data, uh, inside the data message uh, have to be defined. So otherwise, the receiver will not understand uh, uh, the data. Like, as we said in the previous uh, talk, uh, what does it mean if name, what does it mean person, what does it mean salary, and so these concepts have to be, or terms have to be defined. So uh, their definition now uh, have to be, uh, let's say, agreed among all organizations. Uh, 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 but why do we need it? Why do we need this ontology? It's actually, can we replace, can, can I call uh, organization A, the sender? of the data message and tell them what does it mean if name, what does it mean person? Yes, you can do. And then you don't need an ontology, by the way. But if we have more organizations, then people typically sign MOU about the technical specifications of their web services. So if you have uh, two organizations, there is an MOU. If you have th th uh, three organizations, then you have three wins between A and B, B and C, and A and C. So you have three MOUs. If you have four, you have, if you have five, six, if you have 12, 15, uh, uh, 100 organizations sharing, uh, or they want to exchange data messages, so it's not scalable at all to have MOUs between these organizations. So what is the solution? The framework to have semantic interoperability is to build an ontology. And you say this ontology is shared among all, all, all organizations, and then we don't need, everyone respect this uh, ontology, and then that's it. We don't need any more technical MOUs. And well, then maybe you say, what? how the ontology from inside look like? Well, it, it looks like, it's not a dictionary actually, but uh, uh, it looks like that uh, every term we use, we have uh, first its name, then we write its definition. Typically written in OWL, something called a standard web ontology language, but it's not necessarily to be written. Maybe you write it in UML, or I really advise you to write it even in something called ORM, Object Role Modeling, which is a graphical language. Just draw it on paper, that's fine. And you, you can classify uh, things. For example, take, which I highly recommend, every country in the world to, when they build semantic interoperability framework, to build a, something called legal person ontology, which is a classification of the legal personalities in a country according to the law of that country. For example, so a legal person can be a natural person, like me, uh, or an organization, so like a bank, university, uh, company, whatever, there's also it has a legal personality. So then a legal person, uh, a natural person can be a citizenship, a citizen, it can be a refugee, and uh, it can, he can be a, a visitor to the country, etc. So we have, we have classifications of even natural uh, personalities, it's not, not, not person in the physical sense, is the in the legal sense. And when we have 
organization, we can have association, we can have a company, we can have uh, um, uh, local authorities like municipalities, etc. So we need a company can be shareholding, non-shareholding, so we can build a tree of legal personalities. Uh, this is actually, it's, it is itself, is the definition of the meaning of the concept, for example, company. Um, you can, but it, this is data, by the way. This is a data ontology. I will, later, I will talk about a little bit about what does that mean, service ontology. Now, um, uh, how can I use this ontology? If I build an ontology, uh, even I build it on paper. I don't, I don't have to build it as something part of a program, you know. How can I use it? Well, if you are a developer, I can tell you, when you develop a web service, avoid inventing names of variables. Don't do this. You have to follow the naming that providing, uh, provided in the ontology. And you respect the meaning of the concept as it provided in the ontology. So it became like the vocabulary space for your web service. It, it provides, the again, the uh, naming conventions, and sometimes even in multi-languages. It provides the meaning, the semantics of your variables, of your data, and also it can provide the structure of the information, the epistemology, the, the structure of your, uh, I use an example, for example, the address. Should I, how should I structure the, uh, uh, inform my information about address uh, uh, or any profile uh, that I want to send and receive? So you can respect the, the, the structure provided in the ontology. So please remember that the ontology will help you to, uh, for naming, for uh, meanings, and for data structure. Now, another very interesting use of the ontology, so as I told you, it's, it's imagine this tree of legal personalities and imagine you have uh, 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 government services. Renewing passport, renewing, uh, uh, issuing birth certificate, ID, whatever. Try to link each the so you know each service, each government service have provider, but also it has consumers, list of consumers. Try to list the list of consumers, or to link them with notes in the legal person ontology tree. This is very important because in many countries. Uh, even they say, my government service is well defined, but it's actually not. Uh, uh, you need to link this. And uh, last thing I want to say about service ontology. So service ontology are also important to uh, classify services because sometimes we need to compose uh, services. So uh, a, a government service consists of several web services. But the, well, a web service can be used in more than one government service. So if you classify your services, it helps you for composition. Uh, again, if you want to have a look to uh, uh, an ontology um, being used in practice and uh, how it looks like and how it's used, I propose you to have a look to our uh, uh, framework in Palestine. It's called ZINAR, Z -I -N -A -R, dot PNA uh, dot PS. There is an ontology there and it's explained uh, uh, in details. Thank you very much.